What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So in this one, I'm going to be reviewing a Shopify dropshipping store that's made a little bit under 200,000 US dollars in bottom line profit. I love doing videos like this because I get to feature successful Shopify stores and draw back the curtains and show you guys exactly what their best selling products are and show you exactly the strategy they've been using to generate those results. If you want to do anything successful in this world, the best people to learn from are those people doing it successfully. So there's a lot to learn from these guys. So make sure you stay tuned until the end. So if I just move myself over here, I'll bring up my pen to point out some of the information. So they're called Haluvo. If you guys want to go and check them out and do your own research the site age is just eight months which we can see here and they have an average monthly profit of twenty three thousand five hundred and sixty dollars with a pretty decent profit margin of 47 percent if we scroll down then and let's take a look at their financials we can see they started off very quickly in october and since then it's been pretty steady perhaps with a slight gradual decline um, if i get rid of this we can see even in the month of may so last month they made thirty five thousand dollars in sales with a pretty decent profit profit margin of course um, of just under $20,000. So what you're about to see today is a fully functioning and active and profitable business and what you're seeing is working. Next thing I want to show you is their primary expenses. So we can see they're paying $10,000 on their shipping, $20,000 on their marketing, platform fees are $100, so that'll be their Shopify of course, and then customer service. So that'll be VAs, people they're paying to take care of all their customer service side of things. Let's open this up so we can take a look at some of the background contextual information so you can see what goes into running a business of this level. So in the short eight months I've been running this business, they've turned over 400,000 US dollars with a net profit of over 30%. 30% is very high, or very, or 30% is towards the top end, it's not very high. However, given the profit they've made, it's higher than that. And that's very difficult to do, but when you see the way they're bringing those sales in, then all will become clear and all will make sense. They're actually using a, I was gonna say off the cuff, but that's not really the right saying. And an ordinary method or an, an ordinary platform. It's a platform you don't hear a lot of people talking about when it comes to selling drop shipping products. So I'll be showing you exactly what they're doing in a second. Some key data points then for this business, which was gonna give away how they're bringing in their sales. So the revenue total, which we've seen is $400,000. The Pinterest ad spend, so they're actually running ads on Pinterest and we'll be taking a look at that in a second. The return rate, 1.27%, which is about right for drop shipping. Profit margin of 40% and email list of 15,000 subscribers so that would indicate they have in and around that many orders. Let's head over onto Pinterest then. So this is their actual Pinterest page where we can see the kind of content they're using to bring in those sales. They're a USA based business or set up in the USA and they have 2.4 million monthly views. If we come down then and have a look at some of the content they're running and some of the products they're kind of selling, when you kind of think about it, people go onto Pinterest to get inspiration and ideas for certain things, whether it's their living room or their garden. They wanna see and have a look at different designs and things and inspiration basically of ways that they can then apply those same designs and layouts or whatever it may be to their own home. So when it comes to selling home products like these guys are, then obviously it's ideal. One of the biggest drawbacks to Facebook marketing is of course, people don't go onto Facebook necessarily to buy things. Unless you're gonna be advertising strictly within the marketplace, people more likely are gonna be scrolling through their newsfeed or perhaps within the messenger app, it, people aren't in a buying mood. Whereas when people are on Pinterest, they're looking for certain things which they potentially want to buy so they can add to the design of their home or their garden. So as I've just been scrolling through, as you can see some very kind of, uh a lot of people would call kind of saturated drop shipping products. However, saturation only exists in certain places. It doesn't always exist absolutely everywhere. For a product to be completely saturated to the point that every single country is saturated and every single platform it's been saturated, it's gonna be a very, very difficult thing to do. Before we go any further then, I just wanna point out some information and some of the numbers behind Pinterest ads which may be of interest and perhaps spark some ideas potentially for the kind of products you want to sell or are going on to sell. So from this particular website, HugeSuite.com, I've used these guys in the past, so typically they're very reliable the software they offer is brilliant. Um, so I have no reason to, to believe that these wouldn't be accurate. So they say on average, Pinterest ads earn a two times higher return on ad spend with a two 
0.3 times cheaper cost per conversion. And that's compared to other social media platforms. That's huge. That is huge. They probably get cheaper conversions because like I said, people are probably closer to that buying mood when they're on the platform. And they probably get a higher return on ad spend, not only because they get a higher conversion, but because CPMs are cheaper as well. Obviously, when you are competing for space on a platform, i.e. Facebook, the more people competing for that space is gonna drive up that costs. So if there's less people on Pinterest competing for a space versus Facebook, it's gonna be cheaper to advertise on Pinterest. So make sure statistics as well, which may favor using Pinterest over say Facebook. So Pinterest users are seven times more likely to say Pinterest is the most influential platform for buying decisions. Pinterest quarterly advertising reach is growing at 6.2% versus Facebook's 2.2%. 45% of Americans with a household income over $100,000 are Pinterest users. What this could mean as well is that you could get away with selling more expensive products. And as it says here, pinners are 66% more likely to give new brands a chance and stay loyal. I think Pinterest is where people tend to go to find those weird and wonderful things that they've never seen before. Let's jump onto their Shopify store then so you can see exactly what types of products they're selling and what their setup is. So first things first, we can see they're using the Crave, which is a custom theme for their Shopify store. Um, it looks very similar to kind of the default Shopify um, website and setup. Um, again, nothing out of the ordinary at the top here, homepage, collections, track your order, about us and contact. Um, just for you, some more kind of generic information and then straight into this month's most popular products. And if you've been in the dropshipping space for 12 months, you've probably seen the majority of these. So you might be thinking, well, those products are saturated, but like I mentioned earlier before, products are only saturated in one place. So if they're heavily, heavily, heavily advertised on Facebook and become saturated on Facebook in the US, it's gonna be a different user demographic that is on Pinterest and probably in a different country as well. So just because a product may be saturated in one place doesn't necessarily mean it's saturated all over the globe on every single platform and won't sell. What it could actually mean and what probably is an absolutely brilliant strategy to use is to take a product that is quote unquote saturated, tried and tested, validated, profitable on Facebook and actually take it to a platform like Pinterest where it isn't saturated where it isn't really competitive because you know you have a tried and tested validated product that is working that people want to buy. So if you can be one of the first people to bring it onto a different platform, so every time somebody sees it on that platform, it's the very first time they've seen it, then that is where the masses of potential is to be had. To give you guys some ideas, if you do want to go down the Pinterest road, I'm on a website called outandbeyond.com and these are the 41 best niches for Pinterest that make over $10,000 in 2020. To be honest, that's just some generic title to try and get interest on. But I've been through this list and if you've used Pinterest for a while, you know it's where people who are quite creative go to to get inspiration. So if you have a product or know of a product or already selling a product in some of these niches, then Pinterest is probably an ideal platform for you. So any kind of arts and crafts, home decor, in my opinion, has to be the number one because I've used it many times myself when I've had the house redecorated or redoing certain rooms or bathrooms, whatever it may be, I'll always go into Pinterest and put bathroom inspiration ideas or for example, nursery. Nursery ideas was a big thing. So it's the perfect place. People are already in certain spaces looking for things to buy to decorate their home. So by selling those products, those decorations, then you're putting those products in the right place to be bought. So home decor, entertainment, DIY and crafts, women's fashion, clothing is a big thing, but obviously that's a very difficult thing to drop ship, design, education, beauty, event planning, foods and drinks, health, quotes, travel. There's pretty much every niche on here. So I'm only gonna go and point out the biggest ones in my opinion. Weddings, weddings, another massive thing that people want to see inspiration for and we use Pinterest for. So any kind of products in the wedding niches, there's quite a few out there actually that spring into mind. Parenting is another big one. A lot of people will use Pinterest for parenting hacks. So if you're selling any kind of kids toy or educational toy or developmental 
little toy, anything like that. Um, again, a perfect one for Pinterest. Another huge one as well, of course, being the time of year is, is gardening. More and more people are spending time in their gardening. They want to spend money on revamping their garden so they can host social events, barbecues, um, drinks, that sort of thing. So if you have products to complement those spaces and help people do that, then Pinterest is going to be an ideal platform for you. If we come back to the content to so take a look at the sort of content um, that they're creating and let's go for one of the most recent ones. So let's go for this one. suffer from neck and shoulder pain due to poor sleep? Well, then this highly ergonomic pillow is just what you need. By providing full support for your neck, the Jesse J pillow promotes, it is also designed into more than ordinary pillows. So what you can see is a very typical kind of UGC style. So it just goes to show the kind of content that works on Facebook will also work on Pinterest. So if you have been selling a product and perhaps not been getting the results that you hoped for on Facebook, before you give up, then try other things. The only time you truly fail at this is when you give up. So as long as you're willing to try new things and you keep trying new things, then eventually you're gonna strike what works for you. And Pinterest may be the platform that has all of the answers. Let's take a look at this pig one then. They've got a few different um, posts for this. Bit of a weird one, probably not going to say much about that. Um, let's move on to a different product, which is probably relevant for this time of year. So let's go for this one. So I've actually seen that piece of content many times before. It's quite a popular product and has been for many years. Every time the weather gets net, um, nice, it comes back into trend. Um, so definitely one of the easier products to get started with because there's tons of content out there um, like that that we've just seen. And they're probably not the owners. I've seen quite a few different companies use that exact video. As I scroll through these then, um, I could spend all day going through and showing you them. Um, if this is the sort of thing of interest to you, then I highly recommend you head over to Pinterest and check them out. Go to Pinterest dot co.uk forward slash holovo um, usa and you'll be able to check them out yourselves um, i'm going to wrap the video up there because i feel like i've touched on the most important points we can see it's a very successful store um, that's made a significant amount of profit in quite a small amount of time and um, they have a very simple setup on their shopify store if we check out the page for this as we can see nothing too complex um, a very traditional kind of default and textbook layout for a shopify store um, title followed by description or paragraph, followed by GIF, paragraph, image, title, paragraph, GIF, that exact thing, the kind of, like I mentioned, textbook layout that anybody can um, copy and replicate. We've seen the different statistics about Pinterest, about how it's a cheaper place to advertise and potentially a higher converting one. And we've also seen the exact content, the guys that you're using as well to drive that traffic to their store. So hopefully I've sparked some ideas in your mind if there's anything I can do to help or anything you want me to build on, um, which I've spoken about in this video, just drop a comment down below. I read every single comment, so I will get back to you. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video on Friday. Cheers.